uh, best wishes on the 46th Nam Foundation Day and also as a part of Ajadika Amrit Mahacho, that is 75 years of Indian uh, independent celebrations of ICR. Respected Dr. Krishna Ella, uh, today's chief guest, managing director of Bharat Biotech, a speaker of today, Dr. Trilochan Mahapatra, our beloved Secretary Dare and DG ICR, Dr. R.C. Agarwal, DDG Education, Dr. Padmanabhan, Chairman RAC and members of RAC, uh, IMC and NARM, IMC members, NARM staff and their participants, former directors and colleagues of NARM, ICR, uh, directors of ICR Institute, current and former vice chancellors of state agriculture universities, deans and directors of research of state agriculture universities. Many have joined from CJIR Institute, KVK, Krishi Vijnana Kendra coordinators, training participants, startups of agribusiness management of NAM, alumni of Agri ABM, ADGs of ICR, former DDGs, colleagues from our agri education division and all other divisions, APO, startups, innovative farmers, fellows of NAS, NASI, State Academies of AP Telangana, colleagues from Indira Gandhi Forest Academy, Dehradun Lal Badr Shastri National Academy and several private companies, scientists and friends from different ICR Institute. And also it is a proud moment for that uh, some of our colleagues have joined first FOCAR batch of 1976 to 111th FOCARS batch of 2021 and line department and press and media. And sir, Today in Zoom meeting, we are celebrating here and side by side and direct many others have joined virtually and also it is being uh, 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 telecasted on YouTube and uh, All India Radio. I welcome Dr. Krishna Ellaji, Managing Director, Founder di uh, of Bharat Biotech, who kindly accept our invitation to deliver 46th Nam Foundation as a part of Ajadika Amrit Mahotsav, despite of his meetings with several union ministers today. And uh, as he was telling that, in fact, uh, Dilrash, she was uh, able to make it to the hotel and uh, taking part of these important auspicious occasion. Thank you very much, Krishna Ellasa. I am grateful to our beloved DZ for guiding us and, uh, and also presiding over this afternoon function. In fact, recently when I met in Delhi, in fact, he was guiding us how to go DG education. I welcome Dr. Agarwal, DDG education, who joined in person today, forenoon celebrations of NAM Foundation Day, felicitated innovative farmers, staff of NAM, startups, APOs, and also joined today. Now, I welcome all the participants for the important foundation uh, day lecture on uh, by Dr. Krishna Ella on innovations for transformations. Now I invite Dr. R.C. Agrawal to introduce the chief guest, Dr. K. Krishna Ella. Uh, thank you, thank you very, very much, uh, uh, Dr. Srinivas. And thanks to uh, Dr. Krishna Ella for accepting our request to deliver this important lecture on a very important platform, which we all Indians are proud of celebrating 75 years of our independence. So this is one of the important activity which ICR has taken up uh, to invite 75 eminent persons like you who can motivate our students, who can motivate our scientists. And especially we welcome you being an agriculture graduate. You have done such a wonderful work. So uh, from the core of our heart, we are really thankful to you for accepting our invitation. Uh, friends, uh, as you know, uh, Dr. Krishna Ayala is an Indian scientist and entrepreneur. He is the founder, chairman, and managing director of Bharat Biotech, which gave India its indigenous COVID-19 vaccine, popularly we know as Covaxin. Uh, Dr. Ella obtained a bachelor's degree from the Tamil Nadu Agriculture University, TNAU, and joined for a master's degree at the University of Agriculture Sciences, Bangalore. He worked as a research faculty at the Med Medical University of South Carolina. Uh, and after earning his PhD from this, uh, from University of uh, Wisconsin Medicine, he returned to India and made up and set up this small lab at Hyderabad Bharat Biotech and engaged in the drug discovery, drug development, manufacturer of vaccines, biotherapeutics, 
pharma and pharmaceuticals and health care products under dr elaz leadership bharat biotech has given to become has grown to become a, a global leader in innovative vaccines in 1999 doc, uh, the company launched its hepatitis b vaccine at a price of just rupees 10 it's a matter of really great satisfaction that uh, at a such a lower price this was uh, kept uh, so rupees 10 per dose and supplied around 350 to 400 million doses to more than 65 countries the company is the first to manufacture a preservative free vaccine and launch india's first cell cultured swine flu vaccine they also manufactured the world's cheapest hepatitis vaccines bharat biotech is one of the first to develop vaccines for viral disease like uh, chikungunya and zika the company has been responsible for developing an eco friendly recombinant and a naturally uh, attenuated strain derived rotavirus vaccines called rotavac the company also produces vaccines for japanese encephalitis dr ela is also involved in shaping india's science education and policy through his association with several committees such as to name a few the scientific advisory committee to the union cabinet csir governing council ccmb governing council research council for csir national laboratories board of visitors global health institutes university of wisconsin several awards have been conferred to dr ela Uh, including the ET now special recognition for healthcare industry award JRD Tata best entrepreneurship of the year award uh, Merico innovation award and university of southern california asia pacific leadership award these are just to name a few awards just to give a brief introduction but he is a very popular figure well known and it's a, especially a matter of proud for all of us that you belong to our own fraternity agriculture uh graduates faculty or agriculture scientist fr uh, fraternity and you have uh, rose up to such a high level and uh, contributed a lot uh, for for the benefit of the society it's a matter of great satisfaction for all of us and especially for joining on this platform so uh, with the permission of the, uh, the the chair i just uh, invite you and give the floor to you uh, for delivering this important lecture on the foundation day of nab Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. So can you see the slide, sir? Sir, please put on slide show, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Slides are there, sir. Sir, it's um, indeed uh, being an agriculture graduate is proud to be here. This is my first lecture. To... Can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, yes sir. sir. This is my first lecture to agriculture fraternity. I'm proud to be here, being an agriculture graduate, and I'm really honored. that our director general uh, mahapatra also joining in this meeting and is honored and i want to thank agarwal sir and i want to uh, thank uh, srinivas rao uh, srinivas rao never leaves a people so i i was hesitating because i don't know how the travels my plans are so scared of uh, committing lot of things but you know it didn't leave me and uh, so but being it's really indeed honored and i want to thank uh, every faculty who are there and every student who are there Uh, i want to thank them because agriculture degree one thing i have noticed it really multitasking degree it teaches you different field many agriculture graduates are successful entrepreneurs they are also in the medical field they are also in the uh, uh, it business they are also police services they are also in ias services at the highest number of ias people and ips i have seen are from agriculture graduates there's really uh, uh, that country has contributed in the human resource very well there's no question about it I want to thank and I wish all the best to the Institute Nam for the 46th day. Today was a Technology Development Board uh, 25th year celebration today in Delhi. So that's why we got stuck in the traffic and all that problem. 
But I think I want to thank the NAM and ICR uh, for calling me. And I want to talk about, um, since I'm a 66 years old, I have a privilege to talk, little critic you also, to so that uh, everybody understands in a different angle. But every one of us in this, right now in the hall, in the video conference, would like our children to stay back in India. We want India to be innovative, India to provide that system of success of, for the younger generation. I think everyone is aspiring for that. And that is what. So my story is going to be Bharat's story to at least motivate some of the young generation there. And I want to talk about innovation, past, present, and future. How how we look at it. I look at it as an entrepreneur. And I, innovation doesn't teach in the classroom. But it's there in front of our eyes. But we don't notice that. And I want to talk about simple transformative ideas. As an agriculture graduate, what I create, uh, those sort of uh, angles into the field. And I think my journey entrepreneurship was a startup in 96, 97. I was just startup, nothing else. I sold my house in US, came back to India, started the Bharat Bhattai with my house money and two angel investors from US. That's all, nothing else. The journey is a different game, but not important. What do I do? I looked at two problems in India, developing world. One is a water problem. Second is mosquito problem. I said we should focus infectious disease around the water, around the mosquitoes. That's why I focus all my thing. And many um, water problem, political commitment required. For malaria, for the mosquito control, you need a scientific commitment. So what we can do as a company, I looked at that angle. And that's all the vision started as a company for Bharat Biotech on infectious diseases. And we created a very good infrastructure. And the first vaccine, as uh, Srinivas and Agarwal sir told me, uh, when we launched the hepatitis B vaccine, 850 rupees was the GSK vaccine, Enjerix B. Now, I mean, we also launched at 350 rupees. Now it dropped to 10 rupees or 20 rupees a dose vaccine now. We exported various countries, helped the part of the world, thanks to Dr. Abdul Kalam, who launched the vaccine. So I think, you know, the one thing I saw when I was in uh, 2000, India only makes a generic vaccine and no innovation, no new vaccine developed at all in India. And including the entire developing world, the entire developing world, including China, as a matter of fact, nobody has developed a new, new vaccine. I think we should position. And we partnered with the Indo-US WAP program and Rotavac, that is the first new vaccine developed in India. And uh, we made it a sensationalized by bringing a five drop concept, like a polio drop. For this so we have done a clear, very intelligent way of protecting royal insurance and all that provided to the mother and uh, child uh, we have done extremely well in the trial and the honorable prime minister launched the vaccine and uh, how an entrepreneur looks at uh, a public problem as a strategy to help that uh, public problem and that becomes innovation so everything is there in front of our eyes we don't have to teach anybody look for something else you look at the map this map black color shows where the typhoid problem is and white uh, places where there's no typhoid. You look at the Western part of the world where the cold countries, virus diseases are more. When a tropical weather, you have mostly bacterial diseases. And problem, unfortunately, in India, we have so much of antibiotic abuse and we, it has also become resistant, drug resistant also. It is there in poultry also now. It has also become resistant, a uh, lot of things. Even mastitis has become a resistant, drug resistant uh, in the cattle. So I think we saw that and this has to need to children. Children are most important. We focused on that. We developed a typhoid conjugate vaccine, probably the first time in the world. And nobody has developed, US and Europe also has never developed a conjugate vaccine. The earlier world generation vaccine typhoid, you cannot give it to children. The world one can be given to others only. Not the, and also not a very highly efficacious vaccine. So we made this first vaccine. And the Gate Foundation was asking, we can't believe your clinical trial in India. How do you prove that? Uh, the clinical research, what you've done in India is stands out. So Gate Foundation funded us in Oxford University and we've done human challenge studies uh, with 120 people, human challenge studies. And that proved almost 89% uh, efficacy of this vaccine. This is the first time in the world in a human challenge study is done uh, for this sort of thing. And from any company from the world, a private company would doing a, a human challenge studies. Mostly Army does a lot of human challenge studies in US and Europe, but not the private company. We are the first private company in the world to do human challenge studies in Oxford and proven. And even New York Times covered in the front page, a small company in Hyderabad done this. And, uh, <clears throat> and I think we're thankful to, grateful to some of the Oxford University students who contributed as uh, volunteers in that. 
when nature covered a uh, treatment that made headline in the globally in 2018 and uh, Tybor, our typhoid conjugate vaccine stood out number one product in the 2018. That shows how the global importance was given to that product. And we have done a various clinical trial effectiveness. Why it is important, we are not an anymore Indian company. We are focusing on a bigger global angle. And this is not is required in even in agriculture. We need to think big now, not a small, not a, uh, not a like a Karnataka or Andhra type things. We need to think global angle. So we've done various clinical trials, including Pakistan, Burkina Faso, Malawi, and uh, DR Congo, Ghana, and all that, Bangladesh, Nepal, and all that. And the Gate Foundation Fund effectiveness. Two publications have come out, New England Journal of Medicine, one of the top journal in that. And we are the first company to make a chicken guinea vaccine in the world. And that now SEPI has funded the project $14 million. As we speak, we are doing a trial in Costa Rica, Guatemala, Colombia, and Philippines, Thailand, and India. And we are the first company in the world to file a global patent on Zika virus vaccine. When nobody was knowing, even US was not aware of Zika spelling. And we were the first one to make a Zika vaccine and made it to happen. Should to show to the world, India can innovate. India can be ahead of the game in terms of uh, over the US and Europe also, or even multinational. And we have done a clinical trials various part of the world. I want to say that we have more than 110 clinical trials have done. So much are important in the clinical trials. And you also have important field trials. It's a very critical. Same field trials also important in that. And we have published uh, as a company more than 100 publications. It's not a pure commercial company. We also uh, best of the best publication. We are very strong in IPR. And uh, we have sold more than actually 9 billion doses. We have sold more than 123 countries. And Covaxin is a uh, the story that what we led in the beginning from hepatitis B, the journey started. Now we matured as a company to compete globally, not just uh, Indian, compete globally. And Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister was there in the plant to interact with our scientists. And, uh, and we are the only one first company in the world to have a BSL-3 production facility. In the animal side, you have BSL-3 plus AG, but not in the human vaccine. Human vaccine, BSL-3 labs are there, but not the manufacturing. We are the first one to create uh, in the country. We have now two BSL-3 production facility in Hyderabad. And that helped us to make a co-vaccine because you need a BSL-3 content. We have done the efficacy trial in 26,000 people all over the country. And, you know, so much journalists, so much of political controversy. Everything is a controversy in this country to do a clinical trial. But we still battle, published one of the best, safest vaccine we produce in the world. And, uh, and I think what is important strategically for a country, we, India is the third country in the world. In terms of publication or a clinical trial, we are number two in the world. Next to United States, uh, Covaxin was the second largest clinical trial in the world. It was done. After that, United King, AstraZeneca vaccine comes in. And uh, China, the fourth one. So that way, we put the position of India in a global map that India is not lesser than this in innovation. And we are there in the picture. And we have published actually 14 publications from one Covaxin publication. All three Lancet, one Nature, two Cell Press, one of the top journals in the world. And these are the various journals we published in. And I think, you know, the innovation is a mind of imagination. It's a very critical. And innovation brings a leadership. And innovation is the only one can create higher GDP growth. No other field can create a higher GDP growth. So therefore, I don't want to talk more thing. But today we are in the oil or no oil. Population is increasing. Food is going to be a security issue for the country worldwide. And germplasm, the, the type of germplasm India has got, ICR has got, I think no other country in the world will have it. And that is going to be critical for us to dividing the world on germplasm. Who has got, who doesn't have germplasm? We'll go into, US doesn't have much germplasm. India has got too much germplasm. Knowledge is going to divide the future of the world. And I think we think in India, we are a great country, we are smart people, we are intelligent people, that's what we think, unfortunately. But you look at our innovation index, we are only 48th in the country, in the 48th country in the world. That is not good. Unless we come in the top 10, we don't stand out. And I think the, the route is going in the direction right now. The direction is going in the direction. Probably in another 10 years, we'll be there in the top five in the world. And I think who creates innovation? It's a country or a company or a human or individual. It is individual who creates innovation. Why this is important? The way that the human resources we're going to create in the country are going to be critical what they are going to create innovation. So there is a, what is the difference uh, in the, uh, this thing? You know, you have a degree and you know skill. Skill means you know how to flow in agriculture, land is a skill set. Or how to drive a tractor is a skill set. 
So a degree with a good degree, agriculture degree, with a good skill, and then you have imagination, how to imagine something differently, and you put together, that becomes innovation. And why is the China is still doing an extremely well in science and technology? It bothers me. The reason is their knowledge is knowledge only, not only degree, they also have a good skill set. That is what made them the one of the best human resources in the world. Even in US, they say excel because of their skill set uh, succeeding them in the uh, in US. In India, we have good knowledge, but skill, skill set is little lacking. And that is what we had to focus on and build on the skill set in the world. And innovation of fast is, you know, everybody looks at Lord Ganesha. We don't, I'm, I'm not talking in the, you know, the uh, religious connotation point of view, but look at it as an um, elephant head is on a human body. It is nothing but a xenotransplantation. In a heart and liver and lungs is a, a organ. A head is on an also organ that can be transplanted. It's just imagination of that. I, I'm trying to give an example of imagination. Zero was invented by Indians and there was no science, no computers, but the just imagination of zero uh, that created a today computer revolution. Without zero, no computer software will be ever existing. Kolkonda is a three kilometers away. You can talk, uh, make a sound, and somebody can hear. There was no speech uh, engineers those days, but the imagination of the sound system has met them to create a Golconda. And I think, you know, zero, steel, ice, surgery, diamond cutting, India, ink, all are the. Albert Einstein said, very, we owe a lot to the Indians who taught us how to count, without which, no worthwhile scientific discovery could have been made. That's a quote by Albert Einstein. That clearly uh, watches for the India's innovation. How fast? Our innovation present, we lost out because of our education system. We also coaching class driven, market driven, and you know we push our children. You go to engineering so that you get a visa easy. You go to medical, force them to children's and job driven. If you study this degree, you can go to Middle East. Like parents driven, status driven. And all that caused a problem. We lost a little bit of thing. Coming to look at agriculture, and you know, a farmer is an entrepreneur. My teaching at my 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 teacher at the University of Wisconsin Madison taught me: you think science in simple language. If you think in simple language, you'll find the biggest solution in the world. But if you think science in a complex manner, you will never find any solutions at all in the world. So I always think in simple way how to think. Look at rice as a farmer. If he's a second output in the way, as India, we are second output, but yield per acre productivity is 54. If my company, if I can make a co-vaccine at 1,000 rupees a dose, and I can't survive in Indian market. Unless I sell it at 200 rupees, I cannot make it to survive in the market. The productivity <coughs> of the technology, it matters a lot. And I want to give that the canola is nothing but mustard oil. The Canadians, they took, they never grown a mustard seeds in uh, Canada. They took from India under bilateral program. They took the mustard seeds to India, in US, Canada. Today, 50% of the agriculture produce of export from Canada is only canola. They don't want called mustard oil. They call it mustard oil, meaning compete with India. That's intelligently the branded as canola, means Canadian oil. And it's the same mustard oil. They, maybe they've reduced the, the smell of uric acid, smell a little bit down. Um, otherwise, it's exactly the same oil. And they made a branded, and we missed uh, that mustard oil, creating a brand value for ourselves. Look at uh, till oil, sesamum oil. In Karnataka, it's called Vallanne. In Telugu, called Manchunone. And uh, Tamil, called Nallanne. And even Malayalam is called Nallanne. Even now, we don't know why it's called good oil. Yeah. And everybody called, my grandmother called me good oil, but still don't know. Yeah, we have an antioxidants and all that. But still, we are missing a science. What is a science? We are able to take a conclusion up to the human level, clinical research. We have to do those sort of research and produce that good clinical data and brand ourselves as sesame oil, India oil or something like that, brand it and sell it to the globe. And it's a wonderful crop for the dryland agriculture. It's a good transformation thinking is required. How do you position the system? And oil is also a shortage of India. And we can really export dryland crop globally as a, one of the best oil, <coughs> we have that resources. Look at orange juice. We drink orange juice, and we, because Americans are drinking orange juice, we also drink orange juice. And most of the orange juice is imported from Brazil and Chinese con China concentrate. And that concentrate is what is blended. Today, real juice, everything comes from the concentrate. And we don't see Muslim sweet lime 
or quinoa fruit in Punjab. We don't see them as a packaged fruit in the world. When Madam uh, uh, President Patel called me, I said, we need to do something, incentivize some industry. Unless you are 70% produce in a Tetra Pak, uh, Indian, produce, Indian farmers produce, you should not give any GST waiver for them or any help them. If you put that game, and I think Indian produce can be consumed right in India, Indian industries will develop a technologies that can be suitable to the Indian farmers and add value to the agriculture produce of the Indian farmer. <clears throat> Today, whatever we drink, orange juice, we are only helping the Brazil and the Chinese farmers, not the Indian farmers. <clears throat> Coconut oil was there for a long time. Everybody said it's bad for the health. Harvard has published so many papers. It's got uh, lousy. You should not even have the coconut oil at all. But Kerala people are having healthy life without any heart problem. But now then uh, Europe, Europe says that it's good for the uh, Alzheimer's disease and sorry, Alzheimer's disease and uh, Parkinson's disease. Now coconut brand is a big brand, whether it's a coconut oil or coconut soap, coconut cream, everything coconut cream in those shelves in US. And that we had our own resources, but we never built a science around that. And I think we missed. You look at unpolished boiled rice, it's also science, but we have to understand in relation the boiled rice with the human and showing that how the diabetic can be controlled. We can do wonderful science around that, but need uh, very strategic thinking and how the science can be accepted globally. That's very important. And I think, you know, your superfood, you know, like uh, uh, this is a Muranga Kai uh, drumstick leaves. Is now it's called superfood in US and uh, Europe. Everybody's taking the uh, leaves from here, but we have not built a science around that. It's one of the best saponin. Saponin is one of the, uh, one of the, one of the best uh, immunomodulator, actually, saponins. is uh, used in the vaccine field also, saponins. And one of the best amino acids, but we have not built that game. And look at the gongora pickles, one of the, again, rich in uh, you know uh, blood pressure, good for blood pressure. How do you build a good science? And uh, have, you know, GI index for this, identify this leaf is from here and build a good varieties that can have more antioxidant properties and that can be sold globally like ashwagandha or ginseng of the US. US never grown a ginseng, ashwagandha. They got it from Korea. Uh, they called it ginseng and they're grown. And US, Europe, well, uh, particularly mid, mid, uh, uh, Middle East, uh, no, sorry, uh, Midwest of uh, US, like Wisconsin, Michigan, and all that, they are the highest exporter of ginseng right now from the US. Uh, ginseng is ashwagandha. And I think the future, I'm still very hopeful because the Indian families, our beliefs in education is important. We don't want our son to be, become an entrepreneur businessman. We want child to be educated. We don't mind selling in our house to give an education to our children. And that culture is going to keep the life, keep going. Uh, for the, how to kill innovation? The, everybody, kids are on the mobile phone all the time. So they don't have time to think in front of them innovation. That is a sad part of this country right, worldwide right now. Is Everybody is on the mobile. <clears throat> what is my role in agriculture? Next five, seven minutes, I'm closing the topic. And uh, what is my role as an agriculture graduate? My, I want to actually, after agriculture degree, I want to do farming in my village. My father said, you're all fit for nothing. You got a degree, but you can't do agriculture. You can only get a bank job or some other job. Please go and get a job. You can't do agriculture. Agriculture is different. And also he told me, second issue, he told me, your customer, farmers means they're poor people. That means you will not survive. So that was hangering in my mind all the time. I said, I should do something. Now that I should do something for the farmers to help. What farmers need is not the production today. Farmers are intelligent. They can grow any crop. If you tell them there is a demand, they can grow any crop, any amount of quantity. But what is important is the marketing. That's the only thing is missing. And I think, you know, we created uh, four different verticals in Bangalore. One is veterinary vaccine. Why it is important, I'll tell you. You know, a food park, gamma radiation, yellow yeah, food. I'll tell you simple ideas, how we convert the ideas into transformation, into product and patent. And uh, you look at Kolar district. No single farmer commits suicide in Kolar. Nagpur, a lot of farmers commit suicide. And same rainfall area. Both are same rainfall area. I was always puzzled. Why is the same rainfall area? One district commits suicide, one district doesn't commit suicide. Just simple idea. You don't need an economist to figure out this. I figured out simple thing is because Kolar district, they believe in allied agriculture. Like they have a dairy, they have poultry, they have sericulture. All this field helping them, even if the monsoon fails, even a crop fails, they're sustaining because of the allied agriculture. 
And I said I should do something in allied agriculture. We created a bio veterinary vaccine. This is, <clears throat> this is probably the largest uh, foot and mouth disease vaccine manufacturing plant, uh, probably uh, second one in the world, in the large one in the country. <clears throat> this is a BSL3 plus production facility and uh, in the Bangalore. And we also created a food park because the, probably this is one of the successful food park in uh, India. Many promoters, they take the subsidy from the government and in the process, they take the loan also along with us to meet the subsidy. And in the process, they become bankrupt. And many projects failed in the food park. Nobody has succeeded. And I think we made it to succeed in Bangalore. We created a very integrated <coughs> facility. Anybody who would like to visit, please visit us. And we also gamma radiation facility. It's the first private sector gamma radiation facility. Many private, many government is owned the gamma radiation, not the private sector. We created and we export mangoes from there. And uh, USDA has, has approved the facility, thanks to ICR. They were involved in uh, approving the facility. And now we exported 500 tons of mangoes to US. I will tell you very simple. In agriculture, if you can take 20% of the produce of agriculture produce out of this country, almost supply demand changes the game. The 20% is a critical for the country, but 20% excess drops the price significantly. Farmer loses so much. The 20% taken out of the market from Indian domestic market, it gets out of the country. And that 80% gets the highest price in India itself. And that's a game we need to play in the country, how to uh, make this game of export when excess production. Like canola oil, 50% of agriculture revenue from the Canada is only from the canola. And we have very good facilities there. And look at the spices. This is my grandmother. You know, when I used to, doesn't do well in my school, she will give me punishment to get pounding my spices. She'll put a spice on a granite stone and she'll give me, give me wood stick to pound the, uh, as a punishment. I was not thinking why the wood stick was given. Why not metal? Why not uh, granite? So I was thinking and hypothesized, is it because it doesn't produce heat? Wood doesn't produce heat. Today, spices, how you make it, you see the right side, they make it grinding at a 270 degrees temperature. When you grind it, spices at a high temperature, all the flavor, flavonoids, phytoalexins, every medicinal value of the spices gone. Actually, whatever we are eating is, is a spices is nothing but a junk. And in addition to that, US government, US FDA has put a red alert on Indian spices and Mexico spices. Both are carrying a lot of uh, salmonella, E. coli, staph aureus, multidrug resistant strains are going back to US through the spices. So they put a red alert. You can look at the internet you will find that a lot of red alert is against Indian spices. And we created one of the cryogenic facility and we're using gamma radiation, complementing both a cryogenic, a totally modernized plant in a GMP facility, produce the cryogenic spices and make it uh, totally microbial free. It's like a pharma quality product. Absolutely no microbes in the, including spores are dead. This is a simple idea. I want to tell the young kids, you don't need a big science to create a pattern or big science to create a product. You know, you have a blood pressure. I don't want to eat more salt. Doctor will allow you not to eat the pickle because of not because of oil, not because of it has got a high sodium content, high salt content. So we made a plant salt from a Gujarat uh, coastal belt, that plant extract. Uh, and that plant salt, we used it in this. And we used a sesame oil in this oil, till oil, and then made it as a pickle. And it's got more than 70% uh, less sodium a blood pressure patient can have same salt taste and still eat. And we just filed a patent on this. So it's a simple idea, nothing else, a great uh, concept. And I think, you know, we need a radical thinking and policies to help farmers. I think farmers needs all of us, our help. Our help is only in marketing the produce, not production. And I think I'd request us since the director general and DDG is also there. We need to think a game plan for farmers, how to help them marketing the producers and how to value add it to them. And very intrinsically, we need, see, CFTRA works independently from ICR system. The need to complement all this together as a strategy, how to add value, which produce goes down and which month goes down, agriculture produce market down in India. How do, how do you help them sustain that time? <clears throat> we missed the GM crops with all the NGOs and all the controversies in India. We missed the GM crops. And now today, many seeds coming from Bangladesh to India, it is all GM crops, unfortunately. So today, Bangladesh gets uh, more revenue because of our restrictions, unfortunately. Even cotton, 
coming from other countries to India. <clears throat> I think we need to think radically. What is our role for GM crops? Are we want or do we want? And second is we are missing a CRISPR technology. CRISPR is going to change the game. The way the oil seed content is going to be in the plants, the way the flowering uh, flowering colors can be changed, and uh, the way the corn varieties are going to be created. And you don't need a you need a tomatoes which are red color which can be processing can be done properly without adding a color. And a green vegetable can be more greener. All, all those things are going to be possible with the CRISPR. And that's one thing. It is not recombinant technology according to US and Sweden uh, regulatory angle. And I think we, we in India also, we should not allow under the RCGM or recombinant technology, the CRISPR. If you make it, then again, NGOs will start fighting on this as recombinant technology. We should not allow, ICR should take a proactive role on CRISPR immediately into the game. And I think um, <clears throat> we have global competition, not anymore uh, Karnataka competition, Bangalore competition. It's a global competition. CRISPR, Chinese are going very aggressively. Today, they're number one. Technology developed in US, but the leadership on transformation of the CRISPR technology is China, right? More than US, right? They have, I was told they have 160 crops has been introduced to CRISPR already, into, including plantation crops. They've introduced the CRISPR technology already. And uh, we need a production of germplasm, which is going to be critical. When you want to give it to somebody, please use a material transfer agreement with, very stringently. We need every germplasm, everybody will ask a seed or variety is only for the future point of view. We need to take that. Productivity, we need to increase that under any circumstances. We need to export, identify crops and quality issues. If excess uh, rice production is there, can we divert that rice area to uh, some other crop that can be exported only some other country? Only export crop for that purpose. We need to think that. Uh, like a mango was uh, chosen as export, but I would suggest for a government of India should have chosen pomegranate as a crop to sell. Because in US, white people also will eat pomegranate. Mangoes only Indian will eat. So you would have a market is restricted. Pomegranate will be our goa. All this can be eaten by the entire population of US and European. Those are the crops we need to identify intelligently and put the game. And we need a value addition in market intelligence, very intelligent game. Marketing, you see how canola uh, branded over the mustard oil and our quality should not be compromised. And I think with that, I want to thank uh, Srinivas Rao and DDG and uh, Director General giving me an opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Krishna, uh, for this wonderful talk, for the inspiring talk, for giving your practical, uh, sharing your practical experiences. And uh, it was full of information. Right. I'm really uh, thankful on behalf of ICR to you. Thanks. But uh, before we, there, there are certain questions, uh, I, I request uh, Honorable DG to just inform us whether we can take first questions or he want to just uh, uh, give his remarks. Let's take a few questions if uh, Dr. Krishna Allah is ready. Yeah. Sure, sir. I, okay. I just want to tell DG, uh, you yeah. know, he is from Orissa, I think, Mohapatra. Yeah. Uh, I'm setting up 500 crores plant in uh, Bhuneshwar. Only reason I'm setting up there because the entire biotech cluster is centering around the south or western part of India. I don't want the restrict to south and western only. I want to move the biotechnology to eastern part of India. So I think okay. uh, we're setting up in a big plan and uh, DG can uh, welcome to when he visit to Bhuneshwar. Yeah. He can go and see that Bhuneshwar. Good. <laughs> very good. Uh, so, so thank you very much for that. And uh, let's open it up for any queries, questions. Yeah. There, there, we will take only a few uh, questions. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, one question is where he had uh, NBS's LUP Jorhat. And uh, what he says is the global warming and climate change causing quick melting of snow covers everywhere. There may be chance that harmful viruses remain dormant for thousands of years under the ice cover may get exposed and may create potential threat to the biological world, including human. How to face such kind of threats in future? What may be the roadmap to tackle any possible potential challenge that may come up any time in future? Good, good, good question, very complex question. I mean, I'm, this time is very less. But uh, certainly, why is it coming, this problem? These problems are coming on two reasons. One, anybody can use this technology easily to hurt the economy of any country today. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's the situation. Um, the second situation is, because of greed of real estate, we are going to the forest. 
animals are not coming to closer to us because of greed we are getting a deforestation and getting a real estate getting into the forest area and thereby all the viruses which are there in the animal originally incubating there was now attacking us good example hiv was a monkey disease monkey was crawling in the houses in africa it got hit the humans and uh, sars one from animal mers from camel had the human rabies the good thing is a dog virus is now we become dog has become pet dog for us that is now giving transmitting to rabies to us so i think um, this is inevitable and uh, i always tell uh, when i was taking a class with howard temen nobel laureate the smallest genomes are more intelligent than the big genome the smallest genome is a virus which are more intelligent and it find a way and we is a continuous uh, fitness of survival both of us and we have to keep fighting and keep moving on but definitely climate change is going to change impact whether mosquito population is going to increase so the transmission increases virus may not change but uh, definitely the transmissibility and the susceptibility of the human being will increase to those viruses because of climate changes even climate changes your cropping pattern will be changing what is grown in rice may not be growing rice in 5 years now and it may be grown some other crop so we need to think even icr has to start thinking what are the climate changes going to impact and what cropping pattern we should start planning changes now itself thank you dr agrawal you are off yes dr taru you are muted dr taru sharma you are muted there is some question people vaccinated uh, travel issue they are asking sir question yes. um i i think uh, we will be getting soon wh pre qualification these are global politics so please accept understand how you know each country wants to take their vaccines only and use their vaccine only for travel purpose so it's all game so don't worry about it we'll all fight it we'll come out next just two three weeks i think dr agrawal is uh, out anybody else dr taru i i think uh, the uh, um organizers have uh, muted everybody so i don't think uh, uh, anyone can ask questions they are asking so, here sir unless they are unmuted but uh, let me see in the chat box if there is any other questions somebody asked a question why is our indian medicine is not recognized globally yeah i, I don't think so it's a true uh, today we export our vaccine to 123 countries so nothing less right now so i think we are gearing up so we are a new generation entrepreneurs like us we are driving different game uh, i think you expect my next son my son is going to be more aggressive than me uh-huh. and so children are going to be more aggressive and they will drive the country yeah i think mostly uh, you know uh, you have answered so one person has where from you got the cryogenic grinding in machine <laughs> <laughs> i can send a email don't worry about it <laughs> i can send that not a problem <laughs> i don't know remember right now but uh, definitely i can send that is not a big uh, science so maybe you know uh, i think uh, we would uh, go ahead and then uh, let me have a brief summary of what you said so uh, instead of going into the questions any further yes. and uh, we have lost connection dr agarwal is uh, nowhere to be seen so what i'll do is very briefly i'll summarize and then we'll finish up let me first uh, we uh, express our sincere thanks to you thank you sir. for uh, agreeing to our request <laughs> to deliver this uh, lecture in fact we have been thinking for a long time uh, but uh, uh, keeping in mind that uh, we it was at peak and you were busy uh, uh, you know handling the covaxin issues and then uh, uh, you know making as many vaccines as possible uh, for the country for other countries and uh, so that was a kind of uh, 
uh, uh, uh, global uh, uh, standard you have set. And certainly, as you said, a country uh, has benefited. It's a matter of pride for all of us, Dr. Krishnayala. And uh, uh, you have made all of us uh, proud uh, being uh, from our fraternity and uh, going into a different subject, uh, altogether different field. And uh, coming back to India, taking that big decision and uh, building something uh, which uh, uh, showcases innovative India. And uh, uh, that's what uh, I can, uh, you know, one line summarize you, that you represent uh, the modern innovative India. And, uh, you know, by taking the decision to come back, uh, also, uh, I, I don't think it would have been a very easy decision to come back. At that point in time, uh, beginning from scratch to come back and establish a, a big uh, uh, organization called Varat Biotech. And certainly uh, that was a big decision. So that's, that shows uh, how much you love your motherland, your country. And uh, that's another uh, you know, kind of uh, trait of yours uh, that is also reflected. Not only that you have an innovative mind, and uh, you know, building that uh, big uh, company with so much of innovation, so many innovations, but coming back to the country also another big decision. And that is, uh, you know, again, revealing, very much revealing. And uh, what you said today, I think, uh, you know, thanks to uh, Dr. Srinivas Rao for uh, pursuing, persistently pursuing it and then uh, you know, uh, getting uh, you for us, all of us, to release uh, all that uh, you said today. Uh, and in fact, in the National Academy of Agriculture Sciences, we shortlisted you to deliver uh, a lecture, uh, you know, uh, in uh, probably in the coming days in the Science Congress, and uh, probably you would be approached. I don't know how much time you'll have, but uh, that's also is there. And uh, I know uh, also on other occasions, we would certainly would like to listen to you as much as possible. But more than this formal uh, meetings and uh, lectures, probably uh, we can build an uh, informal system of communication uh, so that uh, you know, uh, we build uh, in the lines uh, of uh, your thinking uh, what you, uh, you know, deliberated and presented today. Uh, I'll come back to that point a little later. But uh, let me start with uh, the big statement that you made, that innovations are not taught in the classrooms. Uh, it is in front of your eyes. And that's a very big statement that you have made today. And I think that's the uh, take home message for all of us and for everybody. And uh, if I can add to that what you spoke later, that uh, you know, innovations uh, are lost out because uh, our ideas, our objectives are job driven. And uh, uh, very importantly, uh, if you see uh, everywhere, we all coming from rural background and many also in the cities, rather most in the cities as compared to uh, the rural background people, they are all driven by uh, job, but that's not really a big deal. It could be job driven, but the jobs based on innovation. So the innovation concept is lost uh, in our search for jobs, hunting for jobs uh, after degrees. So I think uh, you know the the this is the message which you have given. Uh, the uh, parents and status driven uh, also uh, studies uh, and uh, careers. Uh, and uh, how we all pushing our uh, children in that direction, you know, that's again a very big message that you have given uh, for the whole country uh, and to the education system as a whole. And I believe that one can build around these concepts, uh, you know, and then if you can build a concept paper, and I believe uh, with practical examples, and we can at the center in the Ministry of Education, we can actually uh, build this further 
uh, and uh, push it uh, for uh, you know changes uh, uh, rather i would say uh, 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 revolutionary changes uh, in the uh, whole process of academic oriented uh, you know grade oriented teaching uh, and evaluation process that we have uh, they wrote uh, you know in schools and the emphasis uh, on wrote in schools and uh, also 99.9% or 100% marks secured by students reveals that there is very little uh, you know left for thinking because during our days uh, securing 60% was a big task because there are a lot to think a lot to left for interpretation and interpretation and acceptance by the teachers and there is no scope today uh, for that in our evaluation process everything is defined and marks are also given accordingly and that is how the education system uh, you know uh, actually uh, you know driving us uh, all of us in that direction so 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 that's a big thing that you have talked about and i'm sure uh, you know uh, your story story uh, would inspire uh, you know uh, the uh, generations of uh, youngsters uh, you know uh, to build their uh, future build their career uh, you know based on a uh, focus focus on innovations and i'm sure uh, you know your story from uh, you know uh, moving from agriculture graduation and also uh, you know grinding spices and that innovative idea and leading to uh, a big business today uh, as you have uh, you know done uh, on uh, spice grinding uh, uh, under cryogenic system and also under aseptic conditions uh, you know all that uh, and taking care of uh, the uh, you know kind of microbes uh, which uh, threaten the health system and uh, particularly salmonella contamination and so on and so forth which you talked about so learning from those experiences uh, of the rural life and uh, and uh, uh, deriving innovation out of those uh, you know uh, and then building business uh, out of that so that not only creates jobs and creates wealth for the country but at the same time you know uh, it gives a big face uh, you know it's a face lifting activity and because the country as you said that innovation index and the position 48 and so on and so forth so that's a kind of big boost that is uh, for the country as a whole so so not only creating biotech and building on to the kind of uh, vaccine uh, system whether it is uh, rota vac uh, vaccine uh, or uh, type ba tcv vaccine uh, for typhoid uh, or even chikungunya vaccine zika virus vaccine co vaccine so it's a range of vaccines that you have and you said fmd vaccine as well the range of vaccine that you have developed uh, and then now diversifying to agriculture and uh, you know gamma radiation and so on and so forth what you talked about so all these indicates that uh, it's a fertile mind of yours uh, that is continuously innovating and looking at the opportunities uh, and uh, uh, not only in india but at the global level and that's what you highlighted and i'm sure uh, you know uh, that messages uh, would be uh, taken very seriously by all those who are here and we uh, at the uh, you know indian council of agriculture research certainly innovation is key and uh, what is uh, at the bottom of this or that the core of this is uh, the mind and its application as you rightly pointed out and uh, you know uh, uh, that uh, you know would uh, certainly provide the much required gdp growth and uh, certainly uh, you know innovation would provide us the global leadership and that you have demonstrated uh, plentifully uh, you know uh, uh, through your own actions and the covax action is the beautiful example uh, of uh, what uh, uh, is uh, everybody in the globe looks at and uh, looks up to uh you know uh, we started with uh, you know a lot of uh, uh, promise in the icr 
system. And uh, since you are uh, from the uh, fraternity, uh, you know, that was uh, well uh, back in 1908, uh, we developed the uh, vaccine polyvalent uh, uh, hemorrhagic uh, septicemia vaccine. Uh, you know, uh, that was way back in 1908. And, uh, you know, uh, and in fact, uh, uh, black quarter vaccine uh, during the same period, 1906 to 1908. And uh, 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 subsequent to that, Rinder paste vaccine in 1927. So ICAR has a long tradition and a rich tradition of working on this area of vaccines and applying mines and building on to that. And uh, you know, so far we have developed uh, 25, 26 vaccines in animal systems, including the PPR vaccines and uh, you know, recently the vaccine for brucellosis and so on and so forth. So, uh, so and very importantly, uh, you know, contributing to eradication of three important diseases, uh, the rinder paste, the African uh, uh, horse uh, 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 sickness, and contagious bovine uh, pleuropneumonia. And uh, uh, these eradications through uh, development of uh, biologicals and vaccines you know, or the ICR has been very, very innovative in this whole field uh, and contributing to, although they are not very much highlighted and uh, much before ICMR or other agencies came in to work in this area and uh, the private companies, including yours, were built uh, with a lot of innovations there. Uh, but much before that, the public system innovated in this area and uh, built uh, you know, a lot of strength. And, uh, but then, you know, that opportunity to be a global leader and then, you know, build that at, the, at that scale, uh, you know, uh, uh, requires a whole lot of further, uh, you know, kind of actions. Uh, some of the companies who have taken the technology, they are working in this direction. And, uh, but then a lot more. And I believe with your involvement, uh, you know, as you are planning for FMD vaccine, uh, you know, uh, sky is the limit. And I think with your, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, innovative ideas, uh, certainly uh, it would be a global win-win uh, situation for us. Uh, and then certainly, as you have pointed out, uh, the uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, divided uh, world that we are living in. And that division in today's world is uh, based on the uh, innovations. And, uh, you know, uh, one side is the innovative world, the other side is uh, you know, uh, non-innovative or poorly innovating world. And I'm sure, uh, you know, uh, uh, the kind of uh, emphasis that we have with of the present government, uh, we should be able to bridge this gap and then uh, come out with, uh, you know, uh, this kind of uh, uh, innovations. Uh, but you have, uh, you know, towards uh, other parts, of whatever you have uh, uh, highlighted, I think that's uh, far more revealing that uh, how do we actually build uh, brands and building brands out of the, uh, you know, kind of uh, rich diversity of, uh, you know, uh, ideas, information, knowledge, technology that we have already. And uh, you said that the teal oil, for instance, or for that matter, mango, the kind of diversity that we have in mango, for instance, and a simple innovation of gamma radiation and uh, uh, you know exporting, uh, and uh, similarly you talk of talked about uh, a whole lot of other things like coconut oil or orange juice or parboiled rice and uh, uh, you know gongura petals or whatever, uh, and uh, you know all that which you talked about, uh, you know uh, they are also relevant, and it's a question of building brands, and you rightly said, and it's uh, all. Uh, a guiding force for us that uh, to build brands, you require scientific evidences. And building evidences is very, very crucial to build brands and so that there is global acceptance. And you have rightly pointed out that. And in fact, we are working now in that direction because Honorable Prime Minister has been also emphasizing on the same very point. And uh, you know, unless we have uh, those sufficient scientific evidences, the global acceptance would not be there for our 
kind of products, whether it is moringa or for that matter, our uh, mangoes or, uh, you know, even curry leaves or whatever you would call. And uh, so it, that's a great need to really do that elaborately. And certainly that needs partnership. And, uh, you know, we have signed MOU with CSIR and we have, we have discussed many issues, including the point that you raised that what CFTRI is doing and so on and so forth. And in fact, they have other institutes like uh, CMAP working on aromatic medicinal plants. And uh, so we are working together now that uh, how do we really do that kind of science to build our brands so that we can sell our product and find global markets, you know, which requires a lot of market intelligence studies. And uh, in fact, we have been lagging very seriously behind this. And uh, I know we didn't have, in fact, our embassies are now slowly getting, uh, you know, uh, uh, people uh, with the right kind of background uh, to uh, uh, have proper analysis of the situation in other countries and provide that kind of inputs. Uh, and then I, we need to really capitalize on that further because that is very, very poorly developed area and market intelligence to understand the needs elsewhere and also, how do we create needs at the global market by way of scientific evidences, by big branding and uh, creating uh, you know, uh, that and market intelligence should be playing a very big uh, you know, role in that. And as you rightly pointed out, the quality has to be the cornerstone of uh, our market at the global level. And if you want to really take 20% of the surplus out of the country, as you rightly said, and that's very essential to contribute to five trillion US dollar economy as honorable prime minister is, uh, is advising all of us. And uh, to work in that direction, we need to really export more and more. Our export is growing, but not the processed value added product as much. And uh, if we can do that, and our castor oil is imported by China and value addition takes place to the extent of 900 times. And we have our own labs, and uh, you know we have our own value addition technologies, but we have not been able to succeed to that extent. And uh, raw materials, raw, raw products we are selling, and uh, whatever we are earning, we can increase our uh, value in terms of export, uh, import, uh, export earnings. Uh, you know, uh, maybe ten times and twenty times, even hundred times, depending on what extent we can add value. For instance, our spices. We are earning twenty thousand crore rupees by export of voluminous, uh, you know, or spices, uh, as you rightly said. But if you can add value, and a lot of volatiles are there, and, uh, you know, still there is a lot of scope, as you pointed out, and uh, probably working more in that direction would be quite, uh, you know, uh, paying for the country. And uh, I'm sure our germplasm is key uh, to success in future. That's a rich legacy left uh, behind for us uh, to actually work on. And uh, you know, how do we really uh, compete globally? That's a big challenge. And uh, if you are not innovative, certainly we will not be able to compete globally. And uh, you know, uh, and your example, uh, I know how you have really succeeded at the global level uh, in the field of vaccine itself. That shows how uh, uh, being innovative, we can uh, you know, be globally competitive and uh, succeed in the process. Uh, so, so that is, uh, you know, uh, what uh, you have talked about, and I am sure that we should be able to uh, uh, think radically, and that's your message, and think radically, be innovative, and, uh, you know, uh, plan, strategize, and uh, certainly don't miss out on new technologies. As you rightly said, we missed out on GM. And we are rigorously pursuing on gene editing technology. We have prepared guidelines, and it is now with uh, Genetic uh, Engineering Appraisal Committee of the Ministry of Environment. We are pursuing it, and uh, vigorously. Hopefully, it gets uh, you know approved. Once that is approved, I believe this particular area would get a boost, and uh, I'm sure this country would benefit uh, tremendously. Uh, you know, if we can actually get that through and uh, build that further. And uh, uh, Dr. Ella, I think it's, it was a wonderful experience listening to you and uh, so much of information in 72 slides, but 73 slides, but uh, you very briefly 
you know, uh, uh, took us through the journey of your own and, uh, you know, opened your mind before us, displayed all your traits and uh, uh, of innovation. And uh, that is quite inspiring. Uh, and not only uh, for us and those who have taken your message, certainly they would be carrying that message to these students, the next generation uh, who would be inspired. And you are a role model, and I believe Narm would be uh, preparing the document on uh, the role models. And uh, you know, I strongly believe that you would be one of those role models to be described and to be taught in classrooms, and uh, so that you know people get inspired uh, for years to come, for generations to come, and so that India uh, succeeds as an innovative nation, as uh, a nation of innovations. And uh, uh, as you said, uh, in the gold olden days, uh, not only zero, there are so many innovations, so many innovations. And uh, those were because, uh, you know, uh, we were largely innovative uh, country uh, those days because we were doing a lot of meditation. Uh, we were uh, uh, rooted in basics and they were all rishis. And, uh, you know, that's the reason why a distracted mind can innovate uh, and go deeper and uh, actually discover something which is unknown, explore something which is unknown. And that can happen only when you are uh, you know, totally distracted from the outer world and uh, nothing personal exists, but uh, only your deep interest and motivation is there. The self-inspiring mind is there. And uh, you know, so that's what is very, very important. And I'm sure uh, your examples would be a brighter one in that direction. So thank you very much for inspiring us and uh, setting the tone for us in ICR to move in that direction further and accelerate our activities that we have initiated in those directions that you have pointed out. So we will discuss and have more opportunities to interact with you as we go along. And once again, thank you very much for being with us. Namaskar. Thank you. Thank you, sir, uh, for this uh, nicely summarizing the talk. Uh, I just want to inform that because of network connectivity, uh, we all four disconnected from here. And uh, today it is uh, being attended by large number of our vice chancellors, directors, deputy director generals, and large number of scientists uh, who are present in a big number, more than 490 persons <laughs> they could join. And there is another platform, sir, where uh, thousands of persons, they are connected. Uh, that is icr 75 lecture series webconevents.com and YouTube, ICR YouTube channel. So thank you very much, sir. Uh, I request uh, Dr. Venkatesh Lu, Joint Director, uh, to please very propose brief. a vote of thanks. Dr. Venkatesh Lu, very brief. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, before proposing vote of thanks, sir, on behalf of NARM and ICR, we want to express sincere thanks to you because of you, because of your vaccine and the vaccination, today we could have our Foundation Day celebration in open public function. Last one year, we could not have any such function because of thanks to you for uh, giving the great vaccine and not only to us, to entire mankind. So that's a great, uh, great help to us. And uh, another thing, sir, through your lecture, innovation for transformation, I think we realized, we realized your journey itself is a classical example to achieve transformation. And that is a great message for all of us. And uh, today, this platform is being shared by Honorable Vice Chancellor, students, scientists of uh, entire agriculture fraternity. So we all are proud of your presence. And uh, this lecture we arranged as a part of Azadika Amrut Mahatso. And from your slides, we realized, we realized how much we have plenty of Amrut is in our own system. So a lot of Amrut is there with us. And we have to see that. We have to realize that. And we have to take advantage of that. So great message from you and great message from your lecture. And so far, so far, we realized agriculture is contributing for food security and nutritional security, I think you made not only those two, we are also we are also helping for public health. So another dimension for our agriculture fraternity and a, a wonderful feeling and we remember, but we miss you sir, 
we wanted to you in person in our foundation day celebration at norm hyderabad but uh, nevertheless uh, we 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 got benefited by your uh, virtual presentation and for that uh, thanks a lot and uh, certainly certainly we all remember this foundation day and your lecture and we cherish cherish your presence your presentation for years to come once again on behalf of norm on behalf of icr we express our sincere thanks to you and also all our viewers many are uh, our own seniors um, uh, very senior persons from various uh, institutions organizations and university we, uh, for their participation we express our sincere thanks and thanks to each one of you Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to all of you. Thank you, sir. Thank and you, sir. with this, this wonderful lecture ends here. Thank you, Dr. Krishnala. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.